Hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello. It's so good to be here. And thank you so much for all the messages that I was receiving. This is really wonderful to know. Hang on, let me connect the microphone. It's really wonderful to know that um, you're receiving this material so well. And I cannot even tell you how important it's going to be for you when you are actually in the field, when you are dating, when you are talking to people, and when you are attracting your soulmate. So let's say hello, I'm in Boston today. Actually, I escaped a snowstorm uh, at my retreat center where I live upstate New York. Athena, Grace, hi. Hi, Marisol, so good to see you. So today, my love, yeah, say hi, say where you're coming from. Today, we have such an exciting topic one of my absolutely favorite topics of all times how to lead with your feminine and become magnetic to men of your choice so please if you want to learn how to lead with your feminine please put yes into the comments and as always so today is day two of our attract soulmate three-day class so whoever is the most active during um, the three days of their class, you are going to get a 30 minute coaching session with me. And um, during the coaching session, some kind of magic is going to happen. Uh, sometimes uh, it becomes obvious what your soulmate block is or your love block is. Sometimes um, we just look at um, possibly some little little correction or some little tweak that can be made for you to really start attracting the right kind of a right kind of a man into your life uh, sometimes we heal the past sometimes um, something happens that allows you to completely let go of some kind of attachment that um, some kind of attachment that you had in in the past okay my love so be active uh, for post into the group and also um, there is a link here book your 15 minute one-on-one -on -one love clarity call with my colleague one of our coaches and Marie who is going to hear you out see where you're at and recommend something so uh, we'll see if we can help you what would be the best way to help you sometimes mm, we invite you into our coaching programs uh, and then another call is booked to go over that sometimes we give you free resources sometimes we just tell you about other things that uh, we do and one of them is really exciting is the magnetic woman retreat that we do every year sometimes twice a year at my retreat center Okay, my love, so let's go right to it. I'm going to ask you about certain things and just put yes if it happened with you in your relationships with men. Has it ever happened that you felt that you are the only one who is really carrying the relationship and who is responsible for most things in the relationship? For example, decision-making. Or for example entertainment ideas or for example financial stability so if that has happened with you please put yes into the comments my other question is if you are a woman who possibly uh, is over 35 I often hear that um, women start feeling invisible or maybe you always felt invisible your whole life just like I felt invisible actually until I became about 15 years old. Uh, actually, maybe I felt worse than invisible. In fact, I was pretty visible, but not in a good way because some of you know my story. I am from Russia and Russian women really look different than I do. Uh, they are usually blonde and very tall and they have really perfect little noses and high cheekbones. And so as a, as a child, as a little girl, I felt incredibly ugly and, and really discriminated against in many, many ways. So if this is something that's happened with you or is happening with you, if you're feeling invisible right now, also put yes into the comments. Has it happened with you that 
the guy that you're really attracted to is the guy who really is not interested in you. So also put yes into the comments. And has it happened with you that you're really attracted to somebody and, and that guy is only perceiving you as a friend, okay? It's keeping you in the friend zone. So definitely, if that happened with you, please put yes into the comments. So all of that means, my love, that you have been leading with your masculine energy, that you have not been leading with your feminine energy. And um, another, by the way, way to know it is when you think of yourself, why do you deserve love? Okay, so think about that. Why do you deserve love? And some of us might think, well, I deserve love because I am a survivor, okay? Because I'm a strong woman. I'm a survivor. I went through so much and I deserve to be loved now. So in some way, that is not leading with your feminine. If you think that I deserve love because I've achieved so much, I have worked on myself. I have achieved a lot. So then again, this is something that when we start leading with our achievements, again, we are leading with the masculine. Okay, my love? So if you, if you want to know how comfortable you are with your feminine, you also might want to think um, how easy is it for you to receive compliments. Okay, so if it's difficult for you to receive compliments, please put it into the post. Yes, it is difficult for me to um, receive compliments. And why is that? Why is that? It is because that inner woman, the inner goddess inside of you still is not feeling deserving. Okay. Another question to ask yourself, what is the message? This is very important. What exactly is the message that I have received when I was growing up about feminine and maybe you received a message, um, maybe your mom couldn't stand up um, to your dad. Maybe your dad was uh, not very respectful and your mom wasn't able to stand up and maybe the message that you received was feminine is weak. Or maybe your mom was really irrational and she was not stable and then you receive the message that feminine is irrational. I kind of like despise it. I don't feel comfortable with the feminine. And as you were growing up, maybe you were constantly rewarded on the basis of achievement and possibly also on the basis of repressing your feelings. So if that is what was happening, it is most likely that you have learned, being very smart and resourceful as you are, that you have learned to lead with your masculine, my love, all right? So if this is something that is happening, if you are uh, deriving your value through your achievements and ability to perform, and that, that means, and you're not able to receive gifts uh, just with ease and, and feeling that you are deserving, that means that your feminine right now is depleted. Now, let's talk for a second also about your ability to say no, okay, my love? So your ability to say no is extremely important. So what are we talking about here? Maybe somebody knows that magical word, that magical word, boundaries. Oh, yeah, so somebody wrote, my mom was very strong too. Yes, absolutely. So, okay, so we can also look into generations. This is an intergenerational trauma. Before we jump into the boundaries, I want to talk a little bit about what is really happening between generations. So a mother is often also leading with the masculine and that and she's not able to teach her daughter. She's not able to teach her girl how to how to derive power from the actual from the feminine. And of course, as a collective and as feminine, we have been re oppressed for such a long time that in so many ways also there is fear to be visible because there is fear to be assaulted. There is fear to be harassed. There is fear to be perceived as a sexual object. Okay, so a lot of feminine has been suppressed that way. 
And what is really also happening in the world, what's happening in the world is that the masculine is really getting ahead. The masculine is creating, driving the effort to create tools and technology, yeah, tools and technology to create progress. And you already know very well that the ones who create tools and technology can scale things and make make things grow and distribute really fast so they get more power so the masculine that is into something abstract that likes to see a big picture that has big visions that didn't have to be distracted by being pregnant by having periods by creating caring life right so that masculine that hasn't been that a that connected with the body that masculine has been really in the avant-garde of power in many ways yeah and not just not just in men but in women as well that's why we see that we get rewarded when we lead with our masculine so what does it mean to be in our feminine and where does it come from and why is it so important well first of all my love here's what's happening a successful quality man he already has his masculine. He's not looking for another masculine. Okay, my love? At the end of the day, this man who has achieved so much, what he's looking for is to come home, and Russian women know it really, really well, to come home to a woman who is soft. She may be strong inside, but she'll be soft outside. So, for example, let me give you an example. Let's say he comes home and he starts... And he starts venting about something that happened at work. Okay, my love? So he's venting and he's, let's say, he's been overheated. And all he really needs in that moment uh, is support and maybe like a, a, a warm soup. All right? And maybe he just needs to be hugged. So what do we do as uh, Western women, uh, as women who are now gaining more and more power so western woman might start arguing with him she might start taking somebody else's side she might start really proving her point and what happens is the next thing we see is two talking heads two talking heads okay so being in the feminine that's the point number one and i'm going to make several points today being in the feminine means being connected to your feeling more than connecting connected to your thought process okay my love so being connected to your feelings means knowing what you're feeling knowing what you're sensing in your body which is so very important okay because when you don't know what your body is sensing you will get sick very early in life most likely you will also not be connected with your intuition so being in your feminine means also to be connected with your intuition and what is your intuition your intuition is that wild woman that is sitting in your bones it's that wild woman that's sitting in your womb that is sitting in every cell of your existence who is also wise so she's wild and she's wise and she's primordial. And she has been here on this planet from time immemorial, my love. She is the kind of woman who has been running with the wolves and with the wild animals. She is the source of the dance. She's the source of music. She's the source of inspiration. She is the breath of life herself and she's pulsing inside of your body and she is strong and she wants to be heard so it is that feminine that feminine that you should be proud of it is your hips it is your connection to the planet it's your connection to mother tierra to mother earth it is our feminine power and this is something that makes us more grounded it makes us connected with nature. It makes it possible for us to smell in a way that mm, something doesn't smell good and not just on a physical level. And you could say, well, something in this situation doesn't smell good. 
It's that woman inside of you, that wise and wild woman, your instinct, the one that is wired in your deepest subconscious. She knows when something doesn't smell right. Okay. And so how many times it happened in your life when you met someone, maybe some guy and you, it didn't smell right. Yeah. You felt like, yeah, you know, I probably shouldn't be with him. There is something there, something wrong, but you didn't listen to yourself. You didn't listen to that wild woman inside. You didn't, you, you chose to repress that intuition because maybe there was something that looked good on paper, for example, or maybe there was something that you did out of your neediness or even lust. But the one, that woman inside, your own inner wisdom, she knows everything. And so being connected to her is very feminine. And another great thing about being connected with her, my loves, is this. Through her, you are connected to all nature. And nature has a way of being born developing, growing, and then dying and, and transforming into ashes and transforming into something else. A wise woman is not afraid of the endings. A wise woman welcomes winter. A wise woman knows that there are different periods in life when there is a period of coagulation, where you are ger germinating some kind of a seed, for example, a seed of love. And then there is another period, which is a period of blossoming. And for example, blossoming of love. And then there is another period of maturity. And then there is another period, the period of dissolution. So when a woman has that perception of nature and it's deeply grounded in her, she becomes a woman, a sovereign queen, and she is magnetic. She is not the girl anymore, a girl who's afraid of everything. Oh my God, oh my God, how are we going to be in this forest? Oh my God, what am I going to do if my, if my white dress gets dirty? Oh my God, what am I going to do if, if I don't have cell phone connection, right? Like those things, they are not magnetic, okay? And they are not even vulnerable. They are needy and they're limited. And what it shows is that the woman is disconnected from her deepest core the deepest core which is that woman with a big capital w okay my love so this is very important when a man especially a modern man feels that a woman that he is meeting is connected to the mystery of nature he perceives her as a portal and he follows her into her magical garden my love he he feels he her her smell and he follows her because she is that magnetic woman who is the high lady of the mountain who who resides in the depth of the oceans she is life herself that he is hungry for and here i want to tell you this yeah that man who is sitting in front of a computer all day right in front of a screen and kind of losing even his own instinct and his own inner animal and often losing his testosterone and losing his power when he sees a woman like this he is going to be attracted to her like b is going to be attracted to a flower because she is a flower she has the aroma that is not possible to get anywhere else so your connection with that deep primordial wisdom inside of you with your intuition is crucial and also of course is going to protect you why do we have a sense of smell so that we could smell if something is rotten and we wouldn't eat it right so what if we could smell that something is rotten in, in terms of somebody's personality, right? Or what if we could smell right away, mm, something is rotten with his sexuality, something is not right, this guy is like <laughs> a masturbator or he's perverted or so, something is just wrong. Something is wrong, I'm not going in that direction. Isn't that a great superpower to have? Isn't it a great superpower to have to know what is your big yes and what is your big no? How does it feel? How does it feel to have that big yes? Does it feel like the puzzle just came together correctly? Does it feel like when I feel yes, I feel a line in my whole body. Everything is singing together in unison. And how does it feel when it is a no? Think about it like right now. Feel it. 
what does it what does it feel like when your intuition says no this is not the right person this is not the right coach this is not the right town this is not the right profession this is not the right dress this is not the right color for me to wear today right so how does it feel that no it might feel like some kind of weakness weakness in the stomach it might feel like your chest is a little bit tight it might feel like um your voice is a little bit repressed right so when we know our yes and our no and we know how to value them we know how to value our boundaries and we're deeply connected all the way to the primordial wild woman with our yes and no and we can say it with love that makes us magnetic one of the things that makes us magnetic yeah because men are drawn men not only men everything in universe animals other women everyone non-binaries everyone is drawn to a woman who knows her yes and who knows her no and who can say no with love so if you would like to learn how to say no with love please put that into the comments my loves okay yeah listening to your god i see yeah i'll look at the comments also in the process and later but would you like to know wouldn't that be a great superpower yeah this is an absolute yes this is absolutely no and then we start talking about boundaries what is a boundary what is the boundary boundaries are magnetic why okay so let's think about this has it ever happened with you my love that you started my favorite earl gray tea by the way and marie is here and she's uh making some posts and comments so please please set your 15 minute appointment with her um using the link above while i'm talking it's possible to to do that okay so boundaries why are they so important and what are they okay so has it happened to you that you're starting a relationship and everything is amazing and there is polarity what is polarity polarity is when he's leading with his masculine you are leading with your feminine there is a distance and sexual tension between you okay and sex is hot and and uh, it's exciting to see each other yeah and everything is really going well and then little by little little by little that polarity goes down 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 dissipates and you start merging 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 and sometimes you start dissolving in him and his world and sometimes you start letting go of things that you used to do uh, or that you would do if you were alone like for example hanging out with your girlfriends doing yoga reading doing your uh, exercising any one of your arts or just thinking independent thoughts okay so yeah and all of a sudden you feel like you're merging so here's what's happening when when you merge with a man I really want you to listen very carefully right now because what I'm about to tell you is the most important thing to understand about existence, love, relationships, and everything, everything else. So, listen, my love. There are two desires that sentient beings, human beings, men and women have. And those desires are exactly the opposite from each other one of those desires is to merge with somebody else and to become one so please put into the comments if you have that desire the reality of that desire my love is at the end of the day it is the desire to merge with god it is the desire to merge with everything there is to merge to become one to co come in complete connection complete oneness it's an ecstatic desire and it's happening okay so put it put it yes if, if you had that desire and then there is another desire and that desire is to be your own separate being to have your own separate ego to be separate not to be one okay so here's what's happening in most relationships in the beginning it often happens that both people want to merge okay but then in reality one always wants to merge more than the other and one always wants to be a separate entity more than the other 
So the one who wants to merge more always loses. Okay. The one who wants to be sep more separate and can hold their own boundaries usually is the one who controls the situation in the relationship. It is also usually the one who can hold the sexual tension for a longer period of time. It's also usually the one who is on the receiving side. So it's very important for you to know and to learn how to hold your boundaries. It's a very feminine thing to do, to hold your boundaries, to know your boundaries. What does it mean, boundaries? I, I know that deeply inside and that instinctual woman, that primordial wild woman has no boundaries. She is like a beautiful, big, limitless river that is flowing through all of us, the, the river of creation. But that river also has banks. And those banks, now, when you think about the boundaries is this, you are the goddess in your own world. Inside of your world, things are magical you are the artist within your own life you're painting that canvas of your life as as an artist and this is your world and a man can come in with his own bubble with his own world and what we see very often is that a woman will start bending under his world under his ideas about things under under his criticism right under under his for example laws and rules and and ideas so we don't want that we want you to hold your world and your boundaries strong because that presents you as a high value woman but when you hold them strong you don't have to be like a wounded amazon like like running around with a shield you can actually be very soft outside and in fact having those inner boundaries is exactly what's going to allow you to be soft outside because you know that at the end of the day, you are still going to be that magical goddess in your own world, in your magical world of your art, of your colors, of your melodies, of your ideas, of your magnetic objects. When you know that and you know that you're not going to tolerate being insulted. You're not going to tolerate being used. You're not going to be to, to tolerate being compared to other women, for example, or you're not going to tolerate just, just not being happy, not for a day, not for a moment, you know, no, 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 not ever. So if you know that and your boundary stands right there, that's when you can allow yourself to be soft and to connect deeply and to be vulnerable. Does it make sense? Please put yes into the comments. And if it doesn't make sense, please put your question. So what I'm describing right now is being very strong in your core and therefore allowing yourself to soften up, to soften up at your periphery, at your appearance. And I want to tell you that men find it extremely magnetic. And maybe you know women like this. Okay, my love, maybe you know this kind of a magnetic woman who is, you would think, okay, what does she have that I don't have, right? And those magnetic women sometimes, you know, conventionally, they're not like specifically conventionally beautiful necessarily either. You know, sometimes they are, but not necessarily. And in fact, there are so many Hollywood uh, stars who would you would think, okay, so this woman has perfect proportions, but she's not necessarily magnetic and she's not necessarily strong inside and she's not necessarily feeling deserving, okay, my love? So to be magnetic, you have to have that magnetic strong core, which is deeply rooted into the mother earth and into nature and into your connection with wild and wise feminine. And at the same time to, and then to know that when the time comes, your boundary is going to be strong, <laughs> but at the same time to lead with your very, very soft side. Okay. So that is a big teaching. It's not a very simple teaching. I don't expect you to get it in one second. It is something that took me more than probably 25 years to really fully deeply understand and dial in. Okay. 
and it's a teaching not just to get a guy and you know in fact i've all i always say to my students and my clients my goal is not necessarily for you to get that guy okay to get some guy my goal is for you to be the happiest woman you could possibly be in this lifetime the most enlightened the most liberated the most embodied experiencing joy in your body okay so now let's talk about feminine joy okay and connection to the body mm. so what is it what does it mean to be in the feminine joy when was the last time you were in your feminine joy when was the last time you felt like just singing just because it's beautiful just because it's snowing just because it's raining just because you are under the shower when was the last time when you touched your body and you really really enjoyed your own touch or you really really enjoyed giving yourself a massage or you really really in slow down if you would slow down and really really enjoy your deep communion with the gifts of this world your deep con communion with fruit for example and really really enjoying it slowing down slowing down and what i usually say there is no hurry in the land of the goddess so what does slowing down mean it means pausing it means stop acting all the time like a dude okay so sometimes you can be in that mode and what i also teach and again like you should talk to Anne marie about this yeah, Natalie, I'm happy for you that you did it today. Okay. Uh, is in the marriage. So what is in the marriage? In the marriage means that you have that guy in, inside of you. And if you need to, you can turn him on. All right. You have that masculine. You need to, you need to do something by a deadline. Excellent. Just know he's there. He, he's got your back. He's holding your structure. He's observing time for you. Okay. Your inner man which by the way is a great exercise that we do in um, our coaching group, which is like, who would you be if you were a guy? Okay. And that, that and we work with that. And that tells us so much because usually we manifest our inner man. And then the, and then the other side, the feminine side where there is timelessness and there is time for breathing and there is time to really look at what is and experience what is. Otherwise, what's happening? Life is passing by. Otherwise, you are just this machine that, that just keeps going and doing the rat race. Okay, so being in your feminine means being in that energy that allows you to be that best part of the whole creation, of the whole divine creation, a woman on this earth. A woman who knows how to feel, how to connect to her tender heart, her vulnerability. What is vulnerability? It's ability to feel. It is, it is, vulnerability happens when we unfreeze. Vulnerability happens when we take that shield away. That shield that we usually carry in front of us, that wounded Amazon shield. And by the way, in the deck of cards that I developed, the soulmate codes, this is one of the cards called Wounded Amazon. Maybe we can post it into, into um, this post later. But when you lead with that shield, it's not attractive. It's not magnetic. In fact, most guys are just going to either perceive you as a dude or they are going to run away and run for the hills. Okay? And that shield often also, uh, how does it express itself? Number one, you talk too much. You try to, when you meet a man, when you have that shield and you're leading with the masculine, you're not comfortable with silences, right? Because silence means slowing down. Yeah. It means breathing. It means being in your feminine. It's vulnerable. So when you keep talking, 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 that is a strategy. Actually too much talking is a strategy to escape intimacy, to escape vulnerability. So what happens when both people come together as two refrigerators? Yeah. They're both frozen. And they're both talking, talking, talking. Just think about it for a second. They're talking, talking, talking. No feeling happened. Nothing happens. Nobody falls in love. Love does not happen this way. Okay? Love happens when the heart is open. And when your heart is open, when you are connected to your own vulnerable space, to your own feelings, your heart is open, 
one open heart can speak to another heart and it can awaken another heart. This is when a man falls in love with you. And I can tell you that throughout this whole program and all this coaching that I've been doing with women, I often see when I enroll a woman or we enroll a woman into the coaching program, I usually can tell who is going to attract love, love first and in the easiest possible way. And I can tell you who it is. It is a woman who is connected to her emotions. It's a woman who did work on herself to get into that vulnerability, into that vulnerable space. Now, remember, it's okay to be vulnerable when you have that strong foundation. So if this is something you need to work on, also please um, talk to Anne-Marie and she will throw you this thread of Ariadna. She will throw you that lasso or what, what is it called? Like if we were on a ship right now, uh, we would throw you that, uh, what is it called? That, that thing, that round thing that uh, you could hold on to. And so you don't drown, you know, in that ocean of consciousness. We are inviting you to our ship. Our ship is flying. Okay. So let's go back to this um, heart. Yeah, when you speak directly to his soul, when you are connected to your soul, when you speak directly to his heart, your heart is there, it's present, you're okay with being silent, you're okay with slowing down, you are breathing. Wow, that's a great concept. Nobody is breathing anymore, right? Because when you're busy talking, there is no space for breath. There is no space for you. There is no space for anything. So let's imagine you come to a date, he's talking, 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 he's all angry, agitated, something is happening through his head because he was using his head this whole day, and here you are, you took a breath, let me just show you. So, so uh, you look at him and you just go, and that's it, you just took him, you mesmerized him, you took him into your world, you help him land in here and now and he is grateful and then he's like i want to be with that woman because when i'm in with that woman just makes me feel something different makes me feel something special okay great i'm going to talk about last thing in terms of magnetism today because this has been a lot and this is something that is very important also to learn so what are men looking for and what not to give them? Remember when I when I said that yesterday? <laughs> so what are they looking for? Again, most people, 3 a.m. in UK, all right? Mm. And Marie, it was a lifeline, right? 3 a.m. in UK, I have to tell you, like some people come to our coaching classes, um, like, yeah, at five in the morning, four in the morning, and it's worth it. It is so powerful. Okay, anyway, loves, we are creating space for people from Europe. We have a lot of people from Europe now. So, yeah, we will accommodate very soon. Okay, so he here, are, here are two things that everyone wants. You also want them. Uh, to feel safe, all right? To feel safe. Do you want to feel safe? Put yes into the comments. Probably you want to feel safe. I wanted to feel safe for a long time too. So you want to feel safe. Yeah, but also you don't want to be bored either, right? So you also want to be thrilled. You also want to be excited. You want to be turned on, yeah? So here, of course, there are many interesting topics that open up, like your erotic blueprint, what really turns you on. Are you turned on by danger? Are you turned on by pain? Are you turned, what are you turned on by? So that's a whole other, whole other discussion. But let's say, let's just keep it simple. So everyone wants safety and also everyone wants a little bit of danger a little bit of excitement a little a little bit of spontaneity unpredictability unknown okay so how does it affect us and our magnetism well directly right so if you are yeah excitement natalie wants excitement i i, I see natalie's name a lot here i i have a feeling she's coming for the 30 minutes okay <laughs> We'll see, all right, you can still catch up with her. So, how do we know 
that what people want. We, you just need to look at the movie genres, right? So there is melodrama, there is romantic comedy, and then there are thrillers and horror movies. And you would think, who on earth would be watching those horror movies? Who? <laughs> Why would somebody want to be scared, right? Because it's thrilling, especially when it's not real, okay? So that, I'm going to open up something for you right now. Again, please listen very, very carefully. It's not a simple concept. Okay, so there is nothing more exciting, there is nothing more mesmerizing and magnetic than being scared and being in that flight of fight place, trembling maybe with fear or 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 trembling with confusion or trembling with um with some kind of doubt, trembling, trembling being afraid that he doesn't love me, he doesn't love me, oh my God, I'm never going to see him again, maybe he's cheating on me, something is happening, and then all of a sudden to get a relief from that. Oh yeah, he does love me, oh, oh, oh. So the same, the same way the thrill works in the movies, all right? So you're watching, you're watching something, some horror, horror, <laughs> horrible monsters, and oh my God, oh my God, I'm so scared. And then there is a relief. And the relief is, well, this was a movie, okay? I'm actually sitting in my dining room drinking tea, okay? Drinking something else. So so that is very magnetic and very attractive. And if you were a child of, of unstable parents, you probably have experienced that thrill of relief many times in your life. So if that has happened to you, for example, oh my God, they don't love me, they don't love me, they don't love me, oh, they do love me. Or just being scared about something, oh my God, my, let's say, alcoholic father, he is completely out of control, oh my God, maybe he's going to do something to us, he's going to damage us, he's going he's gonna to scream at me, he's going to criticize, oh my God, he didn't, Whew. Oh, he, you know, he fell, he fell asleep. So that way you get addicted to that drama, to that pleasure of relief from a huge peak. So if this is something that is familiar to you, please put yes into the comments. So what does it do? It makes us like bad boys. It makes us want to um, captivate someone or to, it, 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 it makes us choose things based on the desire for that relief and danger and when we see a good person a good giving person we just don't even know what we're gonna do with that person it just seems so boring so if that has happened to you please put yes into the comments okay so now we've established that there are two desires desire for safety and security especially like women have that desire when they when, let's say, to even get pregnant or to have children, to have milk, yeah, to, to feed your children, you are deeply wired uh, to feel that you need to feel safe, yeah, and that's why you are attracted to those, you know, strong men, because they make your inner animal feel safe, and then you're also attracted to those men who have, like, a killer inside of them, who is so masculine, who is so sure of himself, who is also kind of unpredictable and it's interesting to watch him. So the same thing is happening with men, okay? So when you are just a nice girl, just like maybe like you were taught to be when you were growing up and you were taught to repress your feelings and you were taught to be polite and accommodating, that is not magnetic, okay? So one of the things that we also learn in our coaching program is how to be a good woman, bad girl, how to combine those two things, how to be that daring, spontaneous woman, a woman who can tease, a woman who can, um, you know, really open up space for a flirty dance, a woman who comes in as a lifetime ride to the unknown that he has been dreaming of his whole entire life, but also a woman who has the deep, beautiful, loving core and connection to nature and connection 
to tenderness and connection to her feminine power. So this is magnetic. That's all for today, my loves. I guess I, I uh, kind of like almost even went over. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like adrenaline is a big part of that turn on. So what, what we need to look at and so what's going to be happening tomorrow. And now this is a good time for questions. So if you have any questions, just put them in right now. And uh, as I talk about what to anticipate tomorrow, and it's very important that you're here tomorrow because we'll go even deeper. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, post your questions, my loves here. Um, so what we need to look into when we are attracting that soulmate, and this is what, what we're going to be looking into tomorrow. And the, first of all, the question is, why are you not with your soulmate yet? Why? What do you think? Why aren't you with him? Or maybe he wasn't born yet. <laughs> He's probably, yeah, he was probably born. All right. There is definitely somebody who had, and not one actually, who has been sharing your soul, who has been sharing your soul blueprint and somebody who has been walking through his life experiences, learning things, working on his himself, understanding things about himself. I want to tell you, my loves, that I am very happy to share that many people who find a relationship after the age of 50 actually um they say that it's the best relationship of their entire life the relationship that you come to in your maturity is the relationship which is based on wisdom which is based on freedom which is based on the fact that you have worked through your karma that you are free to choose now, that you're not a marionette, that you're not a puppet that is being drawn to her wounded, you know, relatives, still trying to get that mother or that father to give her the love that she always wanted to get. It is the kind of relationship that you are building and designing from inside of yourself as a sovereign queen. Who is that sovereign queen? It is a woman who is the final authority on herself, super magnetic. It is a woman who is not waiting for a guy to tell her that she is beautiful enough or that she's good enough, or she's not waiting for a guy you know, to come in with any of his ideas about her feminine. She owns her feminine. That is so magnetic. It is so powerful. It is so joyful, not only in a relationship with a guy or another partner, but also in relationship with your children, in relationships with your parents, all of that. Our goal is not just to be happy in this one relationship. Our goal is to be happy, magnetic, magical in every relationship. So we need to look at your love blueprint, which we will be looking into tomorrow. We need to look at your erotic blueprint. Again, what is it that makes your pussy react, really? <laughs> and... And if your pussy is connected to the heart, what is it that, that gives you a heart on, so to speak? Okay, because the way your attraction mechanism is currently programmed is exactly what is going to be determining your choices in guys, right? And and that's going to determine your happiness. So we need to look at all of those things. So tomorrow I'm going to do a presentation for you. I will probably present the soulmate codes actually that that uh, I've developed and there are um, six soulmate codes and you will see that they are based on a rose. It's very exciting. I will show you the rose and uh, you will see all the petals of the rose and how once you activate each one of the soulmate codes, that is the moment when you really, really open up that possibility for that soulmate to come in. And not just that, the most importantly is you fully open up the possibility for the goddess of love to come fully into your whole body and uh, for your soul to be so happy that you are the temple for that soul. It is really such a beautiful, magical moment of mastery and a magical moment of transformation. I want to remind you again, 
that if you feel that you resonate with this teaching, you resonate with everything that we were discussing tonight, please, um, yeah, please reach out to Anne Marie, talk to her, get us, like, get in deeper with us, and we'll see how we can help you. I want to send you so much love, and I also want hold hold on. So let, let's see if there are any questions. People are saying I'll be watching the replay. I'm 60 and waiting as I grow. Yeah, fantastic. You know, we have women 70 plus who will be actually coming into this group and uh, at some point this this month and talking about their experiences and the relationships that they have um, developed for themselves after from this coaching. So 60 is all right. You're still a baby. Mm actually perfect time to like really ground somebody like a real life partner okay no more being a marionette grace yeah thank you your name is grace yeah that's it live it up babe by the way my name in russian means love so i've been living that name my whole life we can talk about spiritual names that's a whole other subject very cool subject sometimes they come to me too and sometimes uh, a name would come to me during a, a coaching program I remember there was one woman who like she came into the magnetic woman retreat and I gave her this red lipstick. Oh my god, I forgot to talk about red. Red makes you magnetic. Different shades of red. Oh, there are so many topics. So red shows, red lipstick, red clothing shows that you're turned on inside. Your turn on, your inner rose will make you magnetic for sure. Um more like different shades of red communicate different things so when she came to the magnetic woman retreat um she she had a lot of fear so i gave her the lipstick and we started calling her fearless so fearless became her nickname in the program and so fearless uh was in her 60s from boston beautiful woman she has the best relationship of her life now had a great pandemic with, with with this guy that was fearless and there are many other f fantastic nicknames one time i had a nickname which was ruby fruit jungle that was a cool nickname i remember that okay okay so people are excited in alignment fantastic natalie is russian great that's why natalie you know is connected to nature russian women are connected to nature for sure yes yeah, start wearing more red for sure it's wonderful to see you all my loves i'll see you tomorrow and uh, i am really really excited to keep journeying with you please reach out to Anne marie and uh, much love much love uh the last thing we are here to change the world we are not here like yeah pleasure i forgot to talk about pleasure connection to pleasure yes all of that taste smell touch dates with yourself that's a whole other topic that we dive deeply also in the coaching yes having your own pleasure is good for the world when you are experiencing pleasure being in your lilith in your wild woman being spontaneous daring having a lot of fire is a gift for the world is great for the world but at the end of the day we're also here to be that cradle to be that great mother to be that one one galactic woman who is whose roots are deep in the earth and whose wings are high in the sky cosmic woman who is here to take this world to the next level to the next level of consciousness and next level of love and next level of care for each other so i want you to heal to choose the right man who is only going to help you feel amazing yourself and also help you be helpful and serve humanity so that you would become together with him so you would become your own ship your own unit your own vehicle for all of us to open up to more love to be love which is really and i'm going to end with this which is really your true nature and everything else is just an illusion all right so that was for tonight i love you and i'll see you tomorrow